Collected Tales of a Dublin Doctor. This podcast is a series of tales written by my father, Patrick Bofin, and rediscovered in a file at the back of a press 30 years after his passing. A fine collection of trout. For some years, a group of six of us went in early June to fish in the west of Ireland. Not all were skilled anglers. Some had taken it up very late in life. One of these was Paul, the oldest of the group. As a young man in the 20s and 30s, he had played rugby at halfback. He played for Ireland on many occasions and travelled with the Lions. In rugby circles, his name is still remembered with affection and respect. When he retired from rugby, he played golf, again at the highest level. His handicap was plus two. Of all the trophies he won, and there were many, he treasured most the South of Ireland Open Championship. In golf clubs all over Ireland, old men still talk of that day when Paul defeated the legendary John Burke at Lehinch. Later he took up shooting. When we met on Monday mornings, it was to hear of the pheasant, duck, grouse or snipe that he had bagged that weekend. He appeared to be the complete sportsman. However, one morning on the shore of Loch Con, he confessed to me his one remaining ambition, to catch a salmon. I encouraged him, but knew in my heart that it was unlikely that he would ever realise this ambition, as he was probably the most awkward angler I've ever seen, and on this particular trip we were fishing for trout. I didn't share his boat that day and was ashore packing my gear when there was a shout from the lake. A boat was approaching and there, standing up in the bow, was Paul, ungainly in oilskins and tweed hat and holding aloft a small salmon. He climbed out of the boat and standing at the water's edge, he held the salmon aloft. He raised his face to heaven and with true reverence, he quoted the great words of Simeon in the temple. Now thou canst dismiss thine servant, O Lord. He had realised his one remaining ambition. I heard from the gilly later that he had hooked the fish inadvertently on a troll while moving from one station on the lake to another. Did it matter? Of course not. It was the practice in the hotel where we stayed that fish caught during the day were displayed on trays in the hotel bar where they could be admired and envied. We had had that day a good catch of 18 trout and three salmon. They were on display, the three salmon on one tray. It was proper that after our labours we could relax in the bar a while. We occupied a table in the corner, kept to ourselves, and diffidently pretended not to hear the complimentary comments on our catch. Eventually, the bar emptied, except for one little man in a grey suit, who sat on a stool staring at the bottles behind the bar. He had a book under his arm. He was a solitary little man. It was Paul's turn to buy some drinks. He went to the bar, and while waiting for the barman, he greeted the little man with the usual inanities. Wasn't it a great day? The little man agreed. Great fish and weather. Again, the little man agreed. Paul could wait no longer. His heart bursting with pride, he asked, and what do you think of our catch? The little man turned, carefully inspected the catch and pronounced, a fine collection of trout. Paul got our drinks and returned to the table. His lips quivered with rage. He told us the conversation. He went on, can you imagine any man west of the Shannon who can't tell the difference between a trout and a salmon? Just then, the hotel proprietor came into the bar. We beckoned him over and asked him who was that man sitting on his own at the bar. Our host just smiled and said, that's a very decent little man. He's the local district justice. A terrible silence fell on our group. Not one of us had a salmon license. Later on that evening, Paul had the last word. A fine collection of trout, the man said. He is indeed a decent little man. (laughs) 